on this Memorial Day weekend, I know you will remember, and please let no one forget, to pray with great gratitude for those who gave their lives in the service of our country and continue to do so today. And it's also a wonderful day to ask the Holy Spirit to help our country so that disaster can be avoided as we go into the future and that our armed services will truly be the force for peace in the world through strength, which they are indeed meant to be. We have the beautiful feast of Corpus Christi, the feast of the body and blood of the Lord. We celebrated this feast already on Holy Thursday, as you know. Holy Thursday is the great commemoration of the Lord's Supper, the institution of the Eucharist and the institution of the priesthood. But as we celebrate on Holy Thursday, our joy is restrained because we are well aware that that very night Jesus would begin the last stages of his journey to suffering and death. So the joy of that moment is restrained. Today is our day to say how great it is that we have those two gifts, the priesthood and the Eucharist, to say that with unrestrained joy. And I hope that's part of our lives and that, again, it's not pushed out of the way by other concerns this weekend. Now, the first reading was about Melchizedek, that is, the priesthood, according to the order of Melchizedek. And then our responsorial psalm had us repeating over and over again the words that are spoken to Jesus and to every ordained priest. You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. But now what does that mean? Melchizedek is a very mysterious figure in the Bible, in the Old Testament, whose origin and whose destiny were unknown. The priesthood of Melchizedek was eternal, No origin, no concrete destiny. His priesthood was eternal in prefiguring the ministry of Christ, the one eternal high priest forever. But that means that the priesthood of each individual ordained priest is an eternal priesthood. Robert Morlino was not eternal, not by a long shot. He's fat. (laughs) But the priesthood of Robert Morlino is eternal, which makes me, Monsignor Holmes, Father Greg, every single priest a mystery unto ourselves. How could it be that we who are weak and human and certainly bound by time and space, how could it be that we have a priesthood that is eternal? But it's necessary. The fact that the priesthood of the priest is eternal calls God's people 
to have great respect for the priesthood. And in more recent years, a lot of that has been lacking, unfortunately. But that's all right. If that's all we get for our sins, we're getting off easy as far as the individuals are concerned. But the priesthood itself makes a claim. The eternal priesthood makes a claim on your respect and on mine. So let us keep that always in mind when we're dealing with priests and all their weaknesses and all their flaws and all their faults and all their sins. They may have all those weaknesses and flaws and sins, but that priesthood is eternal and always deserving of respect. The priesthood of the priest has to be eternal because of what the priest is called to do. He is called to be in the person of Christ the high priest. The priest is called to make the Eucharist happen. And the Eucharist is an eternal reality. So the priesthood of the priest must be eternal to bring about a reality in the Eucharist that is in fact eternal. In the Eucharist, remember what Pope Benedict said. The Eucharist is an explosion of the good in the heart of being. An explosion of the good in the heart of being. In the heart of all creation, good explodes in the celebration of the Eucharist. The Eucharist is cosmic. It's never small. There was a time there when we wanted to have home masses because they were so intimate. And some good came of that. But nothing is easier to forget at a home mass than the cosmic aspect of the Eucharist. That the Eucharist is an explosion of the good in the heart of being. The Eucharist easily has the capacity to change the world in favor of the good. If we as the body of Christ become the Eucharist, we go out into the world and as we get involved with people, the good explodes in our heart, in their heart, and in the heart of all creation. Just imagine that. You cannot overstate, you cannot exaggerate the beauty and the importance of the Eucharist, where the good explodes in the heart of being, in the heart of reality, in the heart of all creation. Imagine that. And these thoughts about the priesthood and the Eucharist and their deep mystery are the thoughts that should fill our minds and our prayers as we later on adore the Eucharist in the solemn procession. Now we have a wonderful custom here of going to the capital steps even, to adore and worship the Eucharist on this feast day. There's so many other things going on out there that we couldn't get a permit. So we'll stay here. But let's keep in mind what we're doing. We're presenting to the world that mystery of the Eucharist that mystery of the priesthood that could save the world and save our country from where we're headed. 
if only we really believed in it and then lived it out. Realize today the tremendous power that God has placed in your hands and in mine through the priesthood and through the Eucharist. Praise be Jesus Christ.